split his host to our third Dalmatian food excursion in a place that may look familiar even if you've never visited Croatia, since it's a recurring backdrop in Game of Thrones. And while we'll be staring clear of dishes like rancid meat stew, pigeon pie, and raw horse heart, we are about to feast our way through the city's top eats based on recommendations from influential locals. Let's start devouring. We are not done with Croatia. We are here in Split and we're gonna spend the whole day here tasting the best bites in the city. But we're doing it all on our own. We've done our own research with a little help from our Inspirato concierge and trip planner. But for the most part, we're on our own. We're gonna have to navigate through the city and it's a little confusing to be honest. So we'll see how we do. Okay, we're outside the palace now so it should be easier from here on out. Okay, here it is. By the way, we don't speak any Croatian, so we're probably gonna hack some of the names today. But we are here at Odma Iza. It means just behind, and it's just behind this theater area here. And we're gonna get something really sweet for the kids. They're in for a real treat. Cute decorating. Choosing from all the options is already a challenge, but since the menu is written in Croatian, we're relying on an illustrated version so the kids can pick by picture. When I saw their Instagram feed, I knew we had to come here, but it's the first stop of the day, so I'm getting some coffee. The kids, hot chocolate. But that's not the only thing that they serve. They have cocktails, Phil's getting some Prosecco. Thank you. And they have some really yummy, savory breakfast dishes too. But look how cute it is. Look at that presentation. She was playing, because she would like slowly, like I put my hand in front of the she called me. Ooh. <laughs> Colt's favorite part about Split, probably Croatia, is all the cats. There are a lot of cats but here. <laughs> Take this and eat it. Brooklyn went with the marshmallow fluff overload, served with one of these wafer cookies, and Colt slurping up an ultra thick Kinder candy bar cocoa. Mm. Good. <laughs> I guess I'll just stick to my coffee. I got a little espresso with milk. Really is the breakfast of champions. Champagne brunch. By the way, you know what this is? It's a split. Mmm, she smells great. Ooh, look at what Colt got. It's amazing. Yeah? Oh, good. I told Erin that our viewers don't like our food tour videos if we don't have booze in them. So leave a note in the comments if you want to see Erin <laughs> drink more on these episodes. Ah, oh, fine. Subscribe and I'll do it. Thank you. Before we leave, we have to pay, and it's only 89 kuna, which is about 13 US dollars. And that's including the espresso, the two hot chocolates, and Phil's champagne, bubbly. Let's hit it. See cats everywhere. All right, so here it is. We must be crazy. We're getting the kids more sweets. This is a pastry shop called Ash Kulac, and it's by a famous Croatian TV chef, and I think the name is pronounced Tia Mamma. I'm probably saying that all kinds of wrong. So how do you pronounce the uh, chef's name? Tia Mamma. Tia Mamma. Mamma. I wasn't Mamut. that far off. What is your favorite pastry in here? What do you think is the most My delicious? My favorite, the wrong one. Uh-huh. Shoe pastry, vanilla cream, hazelnut, and praline. And uh, this one, uh, it's uh, caramelized white chocolate, raspberries, and almonds in the... And this crab cake with uh -huh. vanilla cream. Vanilla cream. That's one of our staples. A solid set of tasty recommendations. Brooklyn's addicted to dairy, so she's going with the cheesecake. I'm taking a bite, though. So this is a small shop, there are only three tables, but it's not too small for me to fit in here and get a bite. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> That's like lemon bar cheesecake. It tastes like fresh lemon though. It's just like Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> that is it. They said hazelnut, right? Mm-hmm. Tastes like Nutella. Mm. All right, I'm gonna have to get in on this one too. So this one is vanilla cream and a hazelnut cake, and it was recommended, so it might be the best here. 
Whoa is right. That is insane. I feel like there's banana in there too. I gotta have one more bite. Mm. Mm. Doesn't disappoint. Really good. You gotta have a bite, babe. I taste at least five layers of flavor in there. That is amazing. Mm. Now it's six. <laughs> That's really good. And this one, only 56 kuna, which is only like eight bucks. On to the next. Two down, three more to go. But this time, we're getting something savory. We're going to Veg, which is a vegan restaurant. And we heard it's the best vegan restaurant in Split. So we had to try some of that. We've had a lot of lamb, we've had a lot of beef, and a ton of seafood. It's time to have some pure veggies. Hi, what do you recommend here? Uh, which Hard to choose between the falafel bowl and the curry bowl, but I'm gonna go with her favorite, and I think we're gonna do the curry bowl. Does that sound good? Yeah. They also have scrambles and wraps and spring rolls. A big full menu can get really anything, but again, all plant-based, all veggies. Hence the veg. Mm, smells so good. Bill gets the first bite. Mm. That's really good curry. Big chunks of chickpea, my red pepper. Mm, really good. Yeah, really good curry, not spicy at all. And I like the rice. Now I want to try some of these veggies. That was the best bite. With all that zucchini. It's like pasta. Mm. 40. Thank there we you. go. Thank you. <laughs> 68, or sorry, 58 kuna. I think that's like $10 US. Yeah, less. Less than $10 US. So now that's three down, two more to go. All right, it's just two minutes to the next place. It's a place called Cantun Paulina. I want to try a dish called Selapi. Kind of like a gyro, but everybody raves about it here, so we've got to try it. And here it is. Um, I don't know if it's open. Veliki, it's hot, Meridine. We don't work on Friday. <laughs> okay, we'll find another place. Well, this is one of the risks of not using a guide, but it's also an adventure. We got to figure it out on our own, and uh, we're gonna have to put our heads together. All right, I found another Savapi place. It is rated pretty highly on Google. It's called Ba Che. I hope I'm saying that right, because it has a little asterisk above the C, which means it makes a ch sound. Ba Che. Maybe. And it's just down the street, so we're real close. It's a one minute walk this way. It's actually this way. <laughs> <laughs> it's this way. <laughs> I can do this. Ah, right there on the corner. It all works out in the end. Can't understand anything on the menu. So we asked the owner here, what was the most typical, the most common savapi? And she told us this one. And we're getting, we didn't even know what these numbers mean, but we chose the one in the middle. So we're getting seven. And now we have to figure out how to eat it. We said go with everything. So we have a few things on the side that I think we're gonna just kind of shove into this pita-like bread. I have an idea. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna make you an amazing bite, baby. Then get you some meat. All right, let's see what this is. Roasted red pepper. Mm. I know you like red pepper, so I'll give you extra. Ricotta? No. Oh. oh, way more uh, flavorful and pungent oh, yeah. than ricotta. And then some onion. There you go, baby. Brilliant idea, babe. Bill's always a problem solver. Mm -hmm. And I'm a mess maker. <laughs> so the meat tastes a lot like sausage and the red pepper flavor is really good, especially with that cheese stuff. Uh, it is a little bit messy to eat though. Mm. And the bread definitely doesn't taste like pita. It's definitely more of a, a white rustic bread. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. I thought it would taste like sausage. No, that like just like steak. Oh, well there you go, a different opinion. I see sausage, he says steak. That is amazing. Interesting texture, like a Salisbury steak or even like one of those uh, veggie patties, but really good. So what do you think, sausage or steak? I'm gonna eat it just this part and tell you. 
hamburger. <laughs> so now we have three different meats. We don't know what it tastes like. Yeah. 44 kuna, which is only six dollars and thirty cents. Thank you. Very good. Last stop is what we always save for last. The best. It's dessert and of course it's gelato. Here it is, Luca ice cream and cakes. Homemade. So we're in line to go inside. Holt thinks that this is to get cakes and over there is to get ice cream. So I'm a bit torn. I don't know what to do. What do you think? Should we get ice cream or cake? Cake. I think we should get whichever one is in this line. That's fine, but Phil's gonna choose this time. I picked out the other pastries. Let's, I want gelato. Let's go over to this line. <laughs> you promised them gelato, so we have to get gelato. What is the Serenica? Uh, Easter bread. Easter bread? Uh, yes. Oh, like perfect. This. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could okay. I do a scoop and a cone, please? Yeah. Bubble gum or a little banana or something? Yeah, right? Mmm, that's unique. So cool though. The Easter bread we talked about in one of our other episodes, so subscribe so you see that one. Do you want to try it, bud? Brooklyn, you want to try this? That tastes like banana sauce. So, we're not done yet. We have to walk around and walk off some of this food for a bit and head back to our hotel, which is in the middle of Diocletian's Palace, which is a 4th century AD humongous palace that uh, was built for the Roman Emperor Diocletian. And we might get lost in it again. So we will see you at dinner. All right, we just spent a few hours in our hotel room, which is kind of cool because it's in Diocletian's Palace. Diocletian. Diocletian's Palace, thank you. So like literally multiple walls in our room are about 1700 years old, that's pretty cool. Uh, but we spent the entire time trying to get on the internet and trying to get our YouTube episode uploaded because that one is supposed to be out in about 22 minutes ago. Anyway, we're very hungry now so we're heading to dinner. And we are going to Apriliki Ovaca. Ova Ovaco. Apriliki Ovaco. And I'm excited about it for two reasons. Number one, I can't find a bad review on it. I can't even find a four star review on it. It's five stars across the board. And we're gonna have a new dish we've never tried before and that always gets me really excited. And we found it down this alley. The multi-part menu with a lot of big story. I was told there would be no homework. Surprise plate. I wonder what's in the surprise plate. Yeah, she'll have it. Thank you. <laughs> so Cole asked for a Croatian drink, and so he's getting pee pee, which actually looks like a sparkling orange juice. Brooklyn didn't want to get it first because of the name. She was a little skeptical of the flavor. But what do you think? What's warm? What's not? <laughs> <laughs> what does it taste like? Yeah. Is it orange? Orange. orange? Okay. And it's here without a granat. What did you say? I Oh yeah. Yeah, she's right. It's super, super earthy. It's gonna be perfect with a meal. Cheers. <laughs> I love this. I'm reading their story. We are to preserve our heritage and the tradition of our ancestors' cuisine because it contains much more than food. It contains the meaning of living. And that's why we explore traveling through food. <gasps> Our surprise plate is here. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is a I actually want to start with the monkfish liver. It's like crunchy. <laughs> I feel like there are bones inside. How could that be? I don't know, but it's crunchy. I think it's just the salt. I mean, yeah, it's salt. Okay. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> now I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try a shrimp. Excuse me, it's a prawn, not a shrimp. And the fork just went gush right through. That's really yummy. I mean, it's cold like you would have in a, like a shrimp salad, but really yummy because it's, it seems like it's cooked exactly enough. All right, cool, you wanna try this one? Thank you. You're welcome, buddy. Yeah, it's actually really good. I've always wondered why it has that vinegary taste. And I'm like, do they just put vinegar in it? Yeah, that one doesn't have the vinegar taste. Which one do you like better? The vinegar. Vinegar, vinegar, vinegar. 
feta with olive oil. <coughs> if you're like me, you would think you can't make feta taste much different, but that actually has a very different texture, very different flavor, super good. And this is the fish pate. This is like the other tuna pate we had, and it tastes just like a tuna salad. Oh, it's, it's that kind of meal. <laughs> That's what it does. <laughs> You might be curious what this dish is that we've never had before. First time tonight. Well, if you're curious, here it comes. Surprise is shark. And we're not talking about fake shark. This is real, legit shark. Like we saw at the marketplace the other day. That's in our other episode. Check it out. Are you ready to eat some shark for the first time ever? I don't know, Dad. Am I ready? It tastes just like a fish, except much creamier. It's so soft. Eating shark, do, 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 do. eating shark. <laughs> it is really like texturized, like mushy, creamy almost. And the sauce is really good, really yummy. First time for everything. Always go out for an adventure, try something different, try something new, and then you know. I'm giving Brooklyn this tiny, tiny bite. I'm gonna try it. <laughs> Such an interesting texture though, not like fish at all. It's almost more like sweet reds. I like it. We're so full of shark, I can't fit any more shark in me. 964 kuna, which is about $138 for the four of us. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that puts us under 200 bucks for a family of four for the entire day, six different places. It's pretty amazing. Love Croatia.